All right, welcome to this, oh, I don't know, stamp sketch finishing video here. This is a scene that I just stamped out on the wood grain paper, and I've mounted it on a piece of, uh, I don't know, kind of a cream um, colored, uh, it's not cardstock, it's just like some uh, thin paper. And then uh, with a little bit of a border of the gold foil. Okay, so on the wood grain paper, there's not a whole lot you really need to do to it because the wood grain makes its own statement. It's uh, textured and it has a temperature, uh, a warm temperature to it. So the thing that I do is I, I just kind of reiterate the shading that's going on in the designs and I enhance that a little bit more. And then I, you know, I can do some highlighting on here if I want to. Now we can go further with it. Um, with some color in here with things like uh, the the paint pens. I'll take a look at it and see if I want to do that. But um, for the most part, it's it's mostly a shading and uh, lighting um, kind of exercise here. Okay, so I have my larger um, tree trunks here in the foreground. The, these ones were the, um, the Art Foamies version of the tree trunk trio. I just needed a bit of a taller trunk and that's where the art foamies really shine in the uh the larger scale um tree forms and uh, these are the uh stampscapes you know designs in the art foamies versions so what i'm doing here is i'm going into my trunk and um adding a little bit of opacity to it We're turning it into a little bit more of a silhouette here. I'm gonna to try to um, darken the right side of it here a little bit more. The trees are kind of uh, right side illuminated, but you know you can just go in and uh, darken that in. And then on this side, what I'll do is I'll darken the right side so it's a little bit more of an interior illumination if i make the um kind of the opposing sides of the trees darker okay so let's do it this way too so these trees right here are getting left side uh shaded And I'll put a little bit of tone on the uh, the right side of the trunk just to make it a little bit more opaque, but I'll make the left side of it a little bit darker. I just turned it around like this just so I have e uh, easier access to it. And I'm just using a just a black Prismacolor colored pencil here, okay? So we have a little bit more opacity to... Um, our trees, it's it's illuminated, uh, interior illuminated. I like my lighting usually coming from um, kind of within the paper, uh, scene. So it's usually center lighting uh, on most of my scenes, not not all of them, but um, most of them. I might have a moon or in the corner or something like that where it's a little bit more left or right um, uh, based at times, but um, when there isn't like a, a light source, I, I generally uh, have it a little bit more centered. Okay, trees are done there. <clears throat> Let's give the shoreline, this far shoreline, a little bit more um, shading. Let's kind of... Uh, Oh, I guess further um, kind of separate it from uh, uh, the near shoreline like that. Just a little bit of a, it's not, I, so I'm using a black um, colored pencil, but I'm not using it for black. I'm using it for kind of shades of gray. Okay, and I usually start off very much lighter than um, whatever the the full saturated version of the 
Uh, that's usually the case with all media for me. Um, I don't go in with really bold applications of any given uh, medium or hue, okay? So right here, the, there's um, shade within these um, bushes right in here. And I'm just going in and I'm further enhancing that. And there's a tree right here and I can add a little bit of um, shadow underneath that tree like that. There's already, the trees are already shaded, but you just kind of bump it up a little bit. Um, you know, in all these cases, see this line right there along the shoreline. So you just kind of add a little bit more. Now I'm adding in black, but let's say if the scene was, uh, I don't know, this water was blue in here. Okay. Like I've, if I'm doing it on a white colored, you know, piece of cardstock or something like that making blue water in here my shadow would be a darker blue not black although you could do it black but i usually do it in darker colors of you know whatever color um an area is if this scene right here was in the sunset and there's you know the reflection of the sky down here and it's golden tones or something like that reds then you'd use a darker red in the shadows okay i'm just saying that you know some people think that shadows are black but um you know like you can see various shades of this foil i don't know maybe this isn't a good example because it's so reflective but um like this pad right here you know the areas right in here are just darker version of caribbean blue then you have lighter versions of it okay this is like an example of black right here. You know, this is just a different color or the colors of my blue shirt right here. You know, there's lighter blues and darker blues. Again, maybe not a good example because this material is very um, dark, but um, usually, you know, full, you know, shadows or folds and materials and things like that. They're just darker versions of the material color. All right, let's create a little bit of a further visual separation between uh, shoreline and water right here. Okay, I've used the um, sedge filler right down here, okay, right along here. But it's very light up here, so you just kind of go in here and a little bit more separation there's textures in the uh, sedge filler as well and you can kind of enhance those a little bit more um our hammock right here is already pretty well modeled but if you want to you can add in a touch more tone into it for a little bit further um volume and variation i can put, even put a little bit of tone on her Right in here. All right, so uh, you know what we're going for here is basically a grayscale, you know, type of statement, but it just happens to be on a colored background, a colored and textured background. Okay. Now I think that's all I'm going to do there, but I am kind of entertaining the thought of maybe adding in a little bit of a uh, color into here. We'll see. Okay, so here is my, um, let's see, not this one right here. This is a white pastel pencil, and it's a really soft type of pe um, pencil. And um, it's pretty fun to use. It, it works really well on this type of paper. You can use a lot of different types of uh, pencils on this paper, like, you know, soft colored pencils. Um, Oh, I don't know. I, I guess some pastels or something like that, too. Now, this is a pastel pencil, but um, I like going in here and just adding in some little um, kind of highlighted detailing. You can add some down there, and if it stands out too much, you can just kind of remove it. You know, you just wipe it right off. Now, that being said, after I do this, I will want to slightly uh, or lightly spray seal this. 
So I'm just going in here with a little bit of this highlighting in here. I've got this kind of more deciduous tree in here and uh, it could be illuminated with its fall kind of version. A little bit too much in some of these areas. When I spray seal this though, it will become um, a little bit more transparent uh, with this white um, application here. So just keep that in mind. So a little bit like along the shoreline like that. And then let's do the same thing. Let's bring a little bit of this kind of color highlighting um, sensibility into the foreground right here just for a little bit more continuity. I really like that. You know, it just kind of relates to the background a little bit more. And how about on the sides of some of these trees? Just kind of a real subtle highlight. You know, I, I darkened one side of the tree um, for shading. And how about we lighten the other side of the trunks for a little bit of of illumination like that. See, it's real kind of subtle. You can, maybe on this one right here, you can do it on the opposite side like this. Remember, I kind of darkened this side of it right here. But see, there's just that little line like that. Um, it's good. It doesn't have to be one continuous line. You just kind of um, add it here or there. And then see, at the base of that trunk, it kind of brings it out a little bit. I like that look. Here, let me do it on this one too. And let's see here. I'm looking for other opportunities here. Um, this little character here on their on the brim of their hat. There's light and shade on the hat too. Anyway, okay, I'm just kind of going in there and reiterating it with this. In some of this, it, it kind of stands out a little bit too much. So again, you just kind of blot it out a little bit, remove some of that. She has in her hand a little... Um, cup that she's drinking from. And I'll put a little highlight on her leg like that, just to stand out a touch. Like this. It's easy to kind of over illuminate it, but it's not bad to do that because then you just go back in and you can take an eraser. Like, you know, like I said, you just take your finger and just remove some of it. You know, just dab it out a little bit and it'll come right off. So sometimes you got to go a little bit uh, too far with things, okay? Um, just so that you kind of have a good feel or a better feel of how far you should go, okay? And with this type of thing, you know, you can remedy it just by removing it, you know, just by rubbing it off like that. So, um, or just diffusing it a touch. There's a rock back here in the distance. Then I think that will about do it with that pencil. I, I do like the look of that. Um, so that's kind of a real, that's a, this pastel pencil is a real soft application of um, highlighting. We can do a crisp application too with the use of uh, our acrylic paint pens. Let's let's try some of that here. Okay, so like right up here in this tree, one of the things I did yesterday, kind of going into this, um, drawing into this soft pastel, um, might not be a great idea with this pen here, paint pen, because it that pastel get, can get up in the tip and start clogging it. So I should really spray seal it, but let, let's just try to apply right now. Get your pen flowing and yeah, it's applying okay. So I can get some nice crisp little highlights in the form of, you know, primarily these little dots that I'm doing in here.
actually looks it's really fun to do. I'll get the trunk a little bit. Doing these little highlights like this, it kind of teaches us to see um, lighting um, a little bit better. I didn't see that right there. Let's get that shoreline a little bit. Yeah, I can see it creates a little bit more of that separation. Here's the uh, columns for the uh, the deck on that house there. Well, it's looking a lot more uh, dimensional, I think. Hmm. It's adding quite a bit, I think. A little bit of highlighting on the hammock. I really like the look of it on this uh, deciduous tree here. And it makes it shimmer a little bit, I think. But I think that should do it. And maybe it went a little bit too light on that hat there. So I'm going to go over it with a little bit of a black pencil and shade it again. So see, it's just much more subtle right there. All right, so anyways, that's our little kind of light lighting and shading. Um, Exercise here on the stamp sketch. Let me put some of these little leaves down here in this water like this or in the uh, the landscape too. It's like the little kind of fall leaves or something have fallen into the water down here. We'll put some of those little highlights down here in the water. I don't know that this doesn't represent leaves, but maybe just some... Uh, a similar texture as those ones in the background like that. See those little shimmering little dots. All right, there's our uh, girl in the hammock enjoying her uh, some sort of beverage <laughs> on a uh, maybe a late summer afternoon or something like that in the mountains. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching.